In this video, we're going to look at how to perform database migrations in Spring Boot. We can initialize a database in several ways. What we've already seen in the previous videos is how to create and populate tables manually using SQL commands. And for example, in Learning Block 2, we did this in PHP MyAdmin. We could use a higher level database migration tool and Spring Boot supports two ways, Flyway and Liquibase. We're going to make use of Flyway. And it's as easy as adding the Flyway migration into your dependencies when initializing the project. And doing so will cause a folder called db.migration to be included in your project underneath the resources folder. Flyway migration scripts are SQL based. It is a set of SQL commands that are executed to drop and create tables, populate tables with data, and do other database operations. And these scripts are stored in the db.migration folder. You can also have Java-based migrations, which will provide migrations in Java classes. Now, a Flyway migration script name is quite important because it tells IntelliJ what to do with the script. And the script name is of a fixed format. First, there is a prefix letter, followed by a version number, and then a double underscore. Please note that if you only put a single underscore, IntelliJ will not detect the script. It needs to be a double underscore, followed by a name that is meaningful to whoever is reading the file name, .sql. So the prefix can be R for repeatable migrations, V for a versioned migration, and U for an undo migration. The version is a unique underscore separated version number, so you might have version 1 or version 2.1, but it's underscore, not point. And the name is a description of the script's purpose. So we can see from this example, V, it's a versioned migration, so V 1.0, then the double underscore, initialize database.sql. So that tells us very clearly what version we're dealing with and the purpose of the script. For IntelliJ to make use of Flyway, as well as importing the dependencies, we need to tell IntelliJ where the migration scripts are. And so in application.properties, after setting the database properties, we can set the Flyway properties as well. And the one that we're particularly interested in is Flyway locations. That is class path colon db slash migration. Even though the folder, when we look at it, is db dot migration, we use a slash in this property. The Flyway migrations will run depending on their prefix. When a Spring Boot application starts, new SQL-based migrations that conform to the naming convention are automatically discovered in the Flyway locations and executed. Repeatable migrations will run, but only if their checksum has changed. Let's see an example. In our database panel, we can see that we have got a Spring Migration database, and there are two tables there already and the Flyway schema history. I'm going to double click on that and it will show us the migrations that have previously occurred, including their checksum. Now these repeatable scripts will only run if the checksum changes. And the way that we can force the checksum to change is to put this line somewhere in the script. And my preference is to put that timestamp placeholder at the top of the file. Let's take a look. Here is the db.migration folder. There's the repeatable SQL migration script. And here is the timestamp placeholder. And because that will insert the current timestamp, that will make this entire file different from the last time that it ran. And therefore, Spring Boot will execute it again. If we don't have that line, the timestamp isn't inserted, and so the file is considered to be exactly the same as the last time Spring Boot started, and therefore the repeatable migration will not execute. You might find that the Flyway migrations are not supported, 
or at least you might get an error message when you start Spring Boot to tell you that it's not supported. And if that's the case, then you will need to add this dependency into the POM XML file and just choose the latest version. And then you'll find that it all works very nicely. Now, in our example, we've got a version migration that will create the person table and insert data into that table. Because it is versioned, it will only run once. And in this table, we can see that it has already run. So when the application starts, it won't run again. Now, if you get to the point where you actually really just want to go back to absolutely everything brand new, you can delete the history file. Because the initialization here is creating and not dropping, you would then need to drop this as well. And we can see that it's going to drop the pets table if it exists. So we don't need actually to drop pets. Now that we've got that, if we start the application, it will find, first of all, the version one migration. And because there's no history, it will execute it. And then it will execute the repeatable migration. So let's start the application. Having built the application in the run panel, we get to see the output from the server. And it says it failed to run. It found a non-empty schema. Therefore, what I'm going to do is to delete pets as well and run it again. And this time we can see in here that it started Flyway and it successfully validated two migrations, which means it found and executed those two migration scripts. And if we refresh the database view, there is the person table, the pets table, and the schema history, which is showing only this execution. If I were to start the application again, because this person table already exists, and in the history, version one migration has already executed, this time it won't execute, but the reset pets will. And so down here, we see that it's successfully applied one migration, and that's the reset one the repeatable migration. So you can see that it's easy to do migrations. You might want to do some background reading about these terms that we've introduced in this video.